This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice, and I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Woo! Uh, my voice is not near as strong as it used to be. I don't sing like I used to. I used to get belt out and not have any hesitation at all, but I don't sing solos like I used to, <clears throat> and I've just let my voice get weak. Um, did I ever tell y'all that I, I think I've mentioned it before, but my daddy was killed in September of 1983. I was 27 years old. It was a horrible time, horrible, horrible time in my life. I need to share parts of my testimony with y'all to show you the things that the Lord has brought me through because he's brought me through a lot of traumas, a lot of traumas. But I was 27 years old and Ash was two and um, about two months after my daddy was killed, this guy contacted me asking me if I was interested in singing in a group. It wasn't a quartet, it was a trio, but it was two other guys and they needed a female vocalist. I think I've told y'all some of this before, but anyway, we went and, and my husband at that time played the bass guitar, so we went and we tried out and it was just a perfect blend. Our voices blended so good. One was an older guy and one was a guy about my age at that time. And we sang and traveled for the next five to six years we <laughs> I don't know how I did it. Well, I was young for one thing. But it really was the healing that I needed after losing my daddy. It was the distraction that I needed after losing my daddy so quick and so... Uh, it was just a bad situation. Bad, bad, bad situation. I really need to share that with y'all, though, because God really... It was just some hard years, but God brought me through. And, um, but we sang, and I even wrote some songs. We even recorded them. We made two albums. We had an old bus that we converted, an old school bus now, that we painted and converted. When you walked in with all the seats going, we had couches and chairs. <laughs> it was hilarious. We would go over railroad tracks and bumpy roads and that furniture would be moving around. It was hilarious. Ashley was about three years old one night and um, or she was about three years old and one night we had gone to a singing and mother had gone with us and uh, we went across some real bumpy railroad tracks and everybody was holding on and Ashley looked at my mom about three years old and said, oh, don't worry about it. It does that all the time. You'll be fine. <laughs> She was used to it. She'd sit down on the floor and color, and we had rugs and everything. It was a great time. I mean, it just, you know, we were, um, we sang Southern Gospel music, and uh, it was some great years. But we would practice every Thursday or Friday night. Every Thursday or Friday night. And then we would sing every weekend. And we would sing on Saturday nights. And we would sing on Sunday in between. Sometimes we'd sing in a morning service with them and have dinner and then come back. It's, a, it's been a big tradition in the South, Southern Gospel singing. And, and really, I mean, I love the United States, but it's, it's the kind of music that the Gaithers, um, the Gaither videos, if you've never seen any Gaither videos, you need to go watch them. But when I watch a Gaither video, I sit and cry because it is the music that I was raised on. We love Southern Gospel music. Any Are any of y'all Southern Gospel music fans? But the Happy Goodman family, the Spear family, Rex Nealon, 
uh, oh gosh, my mind's just going blank. The Tallies, the Martins, um, Happy Goodman family were just like the bomb diggity when I was growing up. That song that I sang the other day, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now, that uh, the Goodmans sang that. And, and you know, Mother and I had this discussion in one of our videos that Howard Goodman liked my mama. <laughs> She wouldn't have anything to do with him. And I told her one day, I said, Mother, why didn't you marry Howard Goodman? I'd have been singing professional Southern Gospel music. She said, I didn't like him. But, you know, and I've also told you that my mother's brother married one of the Goodman sisters. He married Gussie Goodman. And, and for y'all that don't follow Southern Gospel music or haven't through the past, this don't mean anything to you. But that Labriska Hemp Hill was my cousin that died. And the Hemp Hill family sang southern gospel for years and they wrote a song that probably ha is one of the m most famous songs in years gone past that children would sing that he's still working on me to make me what i ought to be it took him just a week to make the moon and stars the sun and the earth and jupiter and mars how loving and patient he must be Cause he's still working on me it my daughter grew up singing that song so many children did during the 80s it was just a big song and it's just you know it's such a simple message Joel Hemp Hill has written many many great songs master of the wind um, consider the lilies songs that I've sang my whole life and um, but you know when you get to thinking about it Think, think about that song. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. So we know that he never gives up on us. He's, he keeps working on us. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. Just a week. That's what the Bible says. In seven days, he created all those things. But how loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. Hallelujah. I didn't even mean to go there this morning. But how true that his grace is sufficient to work on us every day of our lives. You know, we mess up, but we can repent and he forgives us. And he has, and you know, and I, and when I tell the story of my daddy, and I, I, I really need to share that with y'all, but my daddy was a preacher, and then he got out of church, and um, he was the kind of man that thought when he messed up, he messed up, and gosh, we just can't be like that. Now, there are consequences to sins that we do. I, you know, I'm a firm believer in that. There's been consequences in my life, and there's been consequences in all of our lives. But the thing is, it doesn't matter how far down you go, how low you get. When you truly repent, and the Bible says, and to turn from your wicked ways, and to cry out to Him in desperation, He will hear your cries. He will forgive you of your sins, and He will wash you white as snow. Some of you need to hear that today. I, I just feel that in my spirit that some of you think that eh, I've just been a sorry bum all my life. I've never lived for the Lord. He, you know, and see what the enemy does. And let me tell you, we talked about this at Bible study last night. The enemy constantly, constantly, constantly tries to feed into your mind that you're not worth anything. That you've not done anything with your life. That you're too far gone or nobody loves you, that you're not important, and just realize that the Lord would never speak those things to you. The Holy Spirit would never put that into you. When those things come into your mind, I told the girls last night, and I believe this with all my heart, I, I know it's true for my life. We are living in an age where the demonic power is stronger and I feel like the attacks are stronger because I know that the enemy knows that just by the way things are going that the devil knows that time is running out 
I mean, any of you will know how the world has significantly changed even in the last 10 years, the last um, um, five years. And so, he is doomed for hell because he betrayed God. He went against him. He was thrown out of heaven. He was one of the most beautiful, musical angels there was. So he doesn't have a chance for repentance. He's not human. So therefore, he is constantly, he and his imps of hell, the other angels that fell from heaven with him, they are constantly going to be speaking to your mind. Our greatest battles in this life is right here is right between our eyes, right between our ears, as the saying goes, right between our ears. That is the greatest battle that you have to overcome right now. And I'm telling you, I told the girls last night, if there's ever been an age where you have to preach to yourself and you have to proclaim to yourself out loud in your home, in your car, in the bathroom at work, Lord, I used to go to the bathroom all the time and pray when I was having a hard time at work. Wherever you can get alone and you cry out to God and say, Father God, I know you love me. I know you love me. I love you. Strengthen me today. Empower me today. Take these voices that are, are just trying to come into my mind these negative thoughts, these negative feelings, these feelings of depression, take them away. The Bible says whatsoever things are lovely and pure to think upon these things. We have to feed ourselves with positive things in order for this brain to have positive thoughts. I don't always read the Word of God like I should. I watch a lot of preaching videos because I really grow from that. How, whatever podcast you know we're living in a time where the word of God is immediately accessible to us now podcast YouTube uh, you know even like Pandora uh, you can uh, play your style of uh, praise and worship or gospel music that you want we don't have an excuse for not having the word of God the written word of God the 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 Bible uh, one of my friends posted just today that the Bible is alive and breathing and strong, and it is. When do you, oh, the Lord showed me this one night in Bible study, and this is the truth. <laughs> feel the power of God going down this highway. <laughs> Woo! Praise your name, Lord. Do you realize that when you open the Word of God, when you open it, if you open Bible Gateway app on your phone, but I still like the um, written Word of God, too. But when you open that Word of God, the Bible says it is alive and breathing. The breath of God comes out of that written Word. And you may say, uh, no. Uh-huh. The Bible says that the Scriptures were, the very Scriptures were breathed by God. They were written by man. They were used as instruments uh, the men were used as instruments but God, but it says that God breathed the scriptures into them. He used them as the writing instruments. So therefore, if he breathed the word of God into them, they put the pen to paper and they wrote it. That means that when you open that word of God, that it breathes life. Woo! I'm telling you that hit me one night that just I can sit there and read and be empowered with the breath of God. Look it up. It's true. And not only that, God just showed that to me one night during Bible study that when we study the Word of God, He is breathing strength into us. He is breathing His mighty power. I've got goosebumps all over my arms going down this highway. He is breathing the Word, His power, His strength, His peace. You want to know I believe in treating depression. I believe that medication is necessary sometimes because of the chemical imbalances. But do you know that God can give you peace 
that passes all the understanding of man, that passes anything that a pill has to offer you, that a bottle of alcohol has to offer you. These doctors will over medicate you if you're not careful. They will give you anything you want. They will give you too much. And there's nothing wrong with medicine. I take medicine, but I'm here to tell you that our greatest strength, I didn't mean to come on here and preach, but there's a preaching spirit all over me today. The greatest strength that we have comes from that Word of God, that living, powerful Word of God. The Bible said that it is sharper, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. A two-edged sword is just what it says. It pierces on both sides. The Bible says it, it, that when that two-edged sword goes in there, it pierces the spirit and the soul. In other words, it, it, it pierces. It, it comes into you. It is real. It penetrates you. Just like a two-edged sword. You hit somebody. I mean, you stab somebody with a two-edged sword. It is a double injury because the sword is sharp on both sides. That's what the Word of God is. It is sharp on both sides. And when it goes in, it ministers to the soul and the spirit person. Woo! Man alive, thank you, Jesus. Where did all that come from this morning? I'm telling you, I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of him trying to bring depression on me. I'm sick of him bringing depression on my family, depression on my friends, depression on my YouTube subscribers. I'm going to pray with you right now. Yes, I'm driving down the interstate, but I'm watching what I'm doing. But right now, I want to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are suffering with oppression from the enemy, with depression from the enemy, right now, Father, give them the peace of God. Give them your peace, Father, that they can feel your strength. They can feel a renewal in them today. God, give them the desire to get into your word just a little bit at a time, Father, to start bringing that into their selves, to, that they will grow and they will prosper and they will change. Look, oh, just have your hand up on them, Father. Touch them this very day. I bind depression. I bind it in the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray. I, yeah. Let me tell you something. Prosperity is not material, tangible things. Yes, we can prosper with material things. But real prosperity is having Him. Do you have the Lord today? Do you know Him? Some of you have known Him and you've gotten away from Him. I'm telling you, one of these days, the trumpet is going to sound. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. And then those of us that remain, we're going to be caught up with Him in the air. That day is approaching. I love y'all. Thank you so much for listening to my sermon this morning. I'm not even going to take up an offering. <laughs> Woo! Had Bible study last night and we had some powerful prayer over our young ladies. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we, we studied about the gifts of the Spirit. One of my leaders taught last night. I'm so proud of her. My leaders are rising up under my under my teaching. They are rising up and God is, is allowing them to teach and I am so excited. And she taught on the gifts of the Spirit last night about stirring up the gifts in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your body to just cause that flame to grow strong. And uh, I just, I'm just fired up. That's all I can say. I'm just fired up. So I love you guys. And remember John 10.10 10 says, The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And I pray for abundant life for you this very day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive it. Receive all this that I've said today in the name of Jesus. Love y'all. Bye.